Boat yards and boat owners can play an important role in preserving water quality and healthy marine life, especially when it comes to sources of metal on boat bottoms that can leach directly into waterways or reach waterways from careless boat maintenance practices, either in the water or on shore. Traditionally, sacrificial boat anodes have been made from zinc. This metal exhibits toxicity to certain marine animals and plants at low concentrations in water. This video discusses alternatives to zinc anodes and proper disposal of spent anodes. Dr. Jen McIntyre, a WSU research scientist, tells us specific concerns about zinc in our waterways. So zinc can be a problem in aquatic environments because it's such a toxic metal. Um, as a transition heavy metal, it targets proteins, it targets that, and what that means for animals is it targets their their uh, enzyme systems, it can target their um, skin protective layers, uh, it can target their DNA itself, and obviously this, is, uh, this would lead to many problems system-wide for animals being exposed to zinc. Marinas and inlets are especially vulnerable to zinc pollution because, first, water doesn't move in and out as often as open areas of water. Second, there are a high number of boats in a small water space, and third, in addition to marine pollution from zinc anodes, many boat hulls are coated with an anti-fouling paint that may contain zinc pyrithione. This type of paint is designed to slough off the bottom of the boat over time into the water around the boat to prevent fouling of the boat. Then, because marinas and inlets are habitat for marine life and wildlife, the higher concentration of zinc increases exposure to plants and animals. Um, when you have metal on boats that you need to protect, you need to protect them with an anode of some kind, and the anode's job is to pull stray current away from the crucial metal on the boat, uh, be it your prop, uh, your uh, shaft, or any other metal component on the boat. Uh, traditionally, that's been zinc in a saltwater environment. Uh, the zinc starts off uh, like this, and um, as it breaks down, uh, goes to this, and this is um, where the zinc goes into the water, is from the electrical corrosion um, uh, and the metal, and this metal reacting with the stray electrical current in the water. Uh, it helps protect the crucial metal on the boat. Um, one of the issues with zinc, though, is that um, when you move a vessel between salt and fresh water, um, it can crust over, as you see on this one. That brown crust. Uh, is a barrier and doesn't allow the metal to uh, react with the electricity and further corrode. Uh, a more protective uh, one for both fresh and salt water and one that's a lighter metal, not as heavy of a metal into the environment, is aluminum. Uh, they look the same, but when you feel the difference, it's considerably lighter since it's made of an aluminum alloy. Um, still can be used on all types of boats. Um, they actually will even come with uh, their weld-on styles that come on with steel tabs so you can weld them to a steel boat. Um, the aluminum breaks down a little differently. It becomes an aluminum oxide. Um, it has more of this white look to it and that's how you know it's doing its job and it's working. This can be used in salt water, fresh water, or brackish water, so all different water types. Uh, so that, especially for the Northwest, where we have a lot of fresh rivers running into the salt water, it's actually going to protect your boat a, a little bit better because once the zinc uh, crusts over like this, it's not doing your boat any good, and the stray current is going to be going to the crucial metal on the boat. Um, if your boat solely exists in fresh water, you can go with magnesium. Magnesium is um, a nice, very reactive metal, um, also a very lightweight metal, it's not a heavy metal like zinc. And it is more reactive than the aluminum, um, so it'll do a great job in fresh water. Um, there's lots of straight current in fresh water from houses, uh, businesses that surround uh, lakes and rivers, um, and their straight current gets into the water. Replacement of anodes for boats stored in the water is typically needed at least once each year as anodes corrode over time. Frequency of changeout depends on the type of water, boat use patterns, boat storage, and speed of corrosion of the anodes. Alternatives to zinc anodes are available in aluminum and magnesium alloys. Aluminum anodes work well in salt and brackish water, while magnesium are for freshwater boating. 
In addition to lower toxicity, there are a few other advantages of these zinc-free alternatives. For instance, both are at least 50% lighter than zincs, and they perform more efficiently in their applicable water types with respect to amper hours. The Washington State General Boatyard Permit prohibits depositing end-of-life anodes into waters of the state. If a diving service changes out your boat anodes underwater, ask them to rope a bucket underneath the change-out area to place the removed anodes and also to catch any accidental drops. The Washington State General Boatyard Permit requires proper disposal by recycling, including proper containment from the elements and clear signage. Recently we've seen that there's a need uh, for individual boat owners to recycle their anodes. Uh, one of the best things you can do to keep these metals out of the environment is when you do change your anodes over is that you recycle them so that they don't end up in the landfill. Most of the yards or the dive services will offer this and they will recycle them for you. But if you're a do-it-yourselfer, um, whether it's going to be um, at a yard or on a, tra a boat on a trailer, um, you don't want to put the used up anodes into the landfill. Uh, we offer both the zinc and aluminum anode recycling um, and those we can separate out here and uh, bring them to a recycling center to be properly disposed of. The Clean Boating Foundation's Clean Boatyard Certification Checklist also requires proper disposal of anodes and then gives extra credit to boatyards that promote zinc-free anodes to boating clients either by recommendation or through retail. Anodes also play a prominent role in our checklist. We want boatyard operators to know about the alternatives like aluminum and magnesium anodes. At the end of an anode process, a legally required item is to have those spent anodes sealed up in a container uh, as well as labeled cleanly and clearly. A programmatic requirement for the checklist is to ensure that boatyard operators are educated and trained on what the attributes are of aluminum and magnesium anodes. And then a third piece of our best management practices is if they have a retail operation, we want them to be offering these aluminum anodes and magnesium anodes available to boaters. It was an easy decision to make because we look closely at the benchmarks that we need to meet to be compliant with our permit and you know the notion that it is cadmium free is great because that is one of the things that we get tested for along with zinc and copper and many other sorts of metals and heavy metals and stuff so you know it wasn't a hard transition um, it's more I think about customer education so that they understand that yeah zinc is great if you're never going to be in fresh water and magnesium is great if you're never going to be in salt water aluminum is spanning that gap and because Coming the best of both worlds and once you explain that to people and you can show them the research that says you know hey there is really no difference in the effectiveness for you it was it wasn't a hard sell for people it's lighter for the people that you know are weight conscious on sailboats and you know the fact is is that aluminum anodes have been in use for quite some time aluminum anodes are cheaper better for the environment and the same amount of effectiveness as zinc anodes they're one of the few things that we can do for the environment that actually benefit us. I feel like usually there's some sort of give and take. It's either more expensive, less effective, or not good for the environment. But this is one thing that is truly a win-win-win, and there's no reason not to use them.